Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, helpful vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today we're looking in on Blue, my 55 gallon food grade barrel. It's been running for several years continuously and I'm hoping for a really good harvest so I can add that to the stock for my seed starting in a month or so and also make room at the other end for the big stock pot of food that I have. This is my one quarter inch trusty dusty, literally, screen. I will put the link to that in the pinned comment below. And any part that is unfinished, I will just go ahead and put that in a bucket and rehydrate it so that it can go back into the feeding end at the end when we feed the rest of the food. First, I wanted to tell you that I'm gonna have a look over at my overwintering peppers. I was given a new light by Barina. It's a stand, so it's kind of like your regular house stand light. Very small footprint, no technologically advanced tools, just put it together with my hands. So I will put that up next while I am sifting. It's 42 watts and it has high PPFD. If you're a plant person or not a plant person, that is photosynthetic photon flux density. Or in layman terms, that just means how much of the light is getting to your plants. Now I've used this brand before, but the, the ceiling mounted type for my seed starting, this is actually gonna come in handy down here in the basement where I'm trying to overwinter my peppers. It's going to be as tall as me. So I'll put a snippet of not only me putting it together, no tools, just by hand. And then also next to my beloved hot pepper plants. That is going to help out getting my pepper harvest early, early, and then those hot pepper plants that always take forever, this is gonna help get them going faster. I know it's a good brand because I've used it before, so they were nice enough to send this to me. I will put a link below. Also, for the people who watch my channel, there is a coupon code, and I will put that along with the pinned comment. Um, it's plant obsess. <laughs> I don't think there's enough uh, left for the whole obsessed part, but that is the code to get you 8% off. Now that's a pretty good deal, considering it's not a very expensive light to begin with, but it is perfect to keep all of your plants and maybe even the humans a little happier in the winter. Okay, so I'm just gonna screen there. One quarter of an inch is six millimeters, in case anybody's wondering across the pond and then let's see I'm just gonna keep going for a second picking out any of the plastic or stuff that hasn't digested over time this is one of the benefits of sifting in my opinion okay, then I'm just gonna put this in my pan of water let that get soaked up and I have a tub right next to me here keep all of the castings. I'll show that in a minute. A lot of people asked, how do you keep the castings good over the winter? And so I will show you what my setup is and what my procedure is and try and keep them hydrated all winter long. And then as you can imagine, the, the cocoons are going to fall through this one quarter inch, 100%. So we need to make sure that they not only have the moisture that they need to be viable, but also when they wake up and turn into little baby worms, you're gonna want them to have food. The super dry stuff that you're seeing on the top here is basically from me unpotting some plants and changing their uh, size for the winter. Some of the big 20 and 30 gallon pots that I grow peppers in in the summer, they get, you know, moved down to a smaller footprint, so they fit in my basement. <coughs> so this is not all 100% castings. Oops, sticker. Usually the goal is to try and get three to five gallons of castings every time that I harvest. And then that will make room for my inputs that I put in every month. 
because of course it condenses, right? So not everything turns into worm poop. Some, some of it becomes water. Some of it becomes carbon dioxide that is off-gassed. So the biomass itself is not equal when you put it in versus when you get it out. I did an experiment a while back and I weighed everything that I put in and it was, I don't remember, I'm gonna have to go look. But I will also link that experiment that I did where I measured every single input, whether it was bedding or food or water, and then the output at the end of the experiment. And it was close to one to 10, I think. So every one pound of stuff you put in, um, you get a 10th of it back. So for every 10 pounds of castings, no, for every 10 pounds of input, you get one pound of, of castings. My worms usually get approximately in this huge bed that is established. Don't do this to a new bed, but in this very established, very large bin, I can generally put in five to eight gallons of input and that's bedding as well as people food every single time every month so for those people that do their bins more often you really can't do it that often you can't put that much in whoever said that you you know worms eat half their body weight a day or whatever uh that's not really true or at least it's not been my experience all right, we're getting to the part where it's too wet, so I'm gonna call it quits. Tap out that, put this down. And then we can start looking at moving everything where it goes. I will put a diagram up there of the wedge system, and then also another diagram of how big blue really is. It's about a foot deep. And this is actually one 55 gallon barrel that was chopped in half lengthways and then screwed together with sheet metal screws. And it was nothing special, no special screws or anything like that. I just used whatever I had left over in the garage. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just piling up everything and keeping it in order, making sure everybody stays in the correct position in the queue. So you want things that are super old to be at this end, and then you want the younger things to be progressively closer to the feeding end. So at this end, you're really not seeing any worms, and you're also not seeing any chunks of food. But if I do find things like pumpkin stem, I'm gonna put them down at the end where the worms are so that they can eat it. I kind of also have this process and it's not 100% necessary but I do it anyway so in order to make sure that the worms eat everything on their plate you know that's why I sift and take out anything like this I think this is probably an avocado pit but they may take two to three cycles through the bin and I don't worry about it because I know they'll get around to it but I put that down at the bottom of any feeding and then all the good juices of the brand new feeding soak into the old stuff. And then it makes it more bioavailable for the bin critters and the worms. And as the temperature is slowly getting cooler down here, it's 68.9 right now. And the, the new light that I was given by a friend for the for the peppers is helping keeping it warm. I don't, it's a kind of a, a light that heats up a lot. They didn't want it because they didn't want their area to heat up. Uh, but I was like, heck yeah, this basement is not heated. The only source of heat in this basement is the fact that the ducting that goes to all the different rooms on the ground floor is in the basement. So just, um, what do they call that, convection? That's the only kind of heat it gets is what comes off of the pipes themselves. So I was happy to have a lamp that was going to provide some heat to keep the worms going a little bit more. Okay, so now we're getting to like the halfway mark. Like this stuff has a few worms, 
this part is going to have way more worms and it's probably going to be wetter. The idea, dry, really wet, and in the middle, medium moisture, medium density of worms, medium amounts of stuff left over. But anything that's big and huge, I'm still going to chuck it to the other end. So I dragged my peppers in, I don't know, second week of October, and um, Rick from Gardening with Bar Chuckin sent me some seeds for his chocolate moruga plant, which I grew. It's a super hot in case you're into super hots then you know what it is. And unfortunately, it is just take it took so long that it just started blooming in like August. So it is continuing to thrive here in the basement. So Rick, if you're you're watching, uh, I do keep many of my plants that are super hots alive multiple multiple years, just because they take so long to get going that it's really almost impossible in my zone to start at seed and go and get ripe fruit from a very tropical pepper. That being said, I also have a, a sweet pepper, a hatch pepper plant, what we call grandpa pepper, who just hit his 10th season outside. Um, yeah, his, his stem is about the size of my wrist. Still produces a good amount. He's a little bigger than he should be for a bonsai. I think what is a chili chump called them banchis. Okay, so now we've moved all this, we've made the space, we're making progress. Now let's move down to the bottom of the bin. All right, here we are at the business end. I'd say this portion here was done a little over two months ago. Now we're gonna see a lot of worms and a lot of things that look, you can recognize the bedding. You can see the cardboard, you can see the paper. Oftentimes this is where you'll find the worm ball because it is, all the food has been broken down sufficiently by the bacteria and the bin critters. Okay, come on, worm ball. Q, where's your worm ball? Ah, sorta. Of. There we go. So a little bit of pumpkin left over and a decent worm ball there. Although I am gonna move these guys to the end. Cause this is kind of the the preferred spot for the worms. When you first put the food in, they may not be ready for it if it is just regular kitchen scraps. I mean, if you're doing worm chow, it's a whole different set of rules. And I don't normally purposely do worm chow. I do worm chow when I have things expire in the house, but I don't really do it as a feeding method anymore. Okay, so this is the last feeding. Little pumpkin rind left. Still lots of paper. No weird smells. And that, that's how you know if you, you know, another way you know if you're feeding correctly is if you come in here and it smells horrible, then you're feeding too much. Worms will definitely shy away from that ammonia smell that you have with food that is rotting the preferred way for them to get at it is nibbling a little bit at a time here. So as this, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but there are mites in there. The mites chew it up, make it more palatable for the worms, and then the worms get at it. Oh, there's another piece of pumpkin. But you, there are lots of mites and they show up when there's a job to do and they kind of die off when that job is done. But if you keep the food a little steady, then the right amount stays all the time. And I have, I have absolutely, I admit 100% that I have overfed and had a stinky bin before, but it's all live and learn for where you live and your situation. Not everybody, not everybody's bin is gonna be 100% the same. You know, we've got other worm channel like Patrick and Autumn. They're in Florida for compost learn by doing. 
Um, let's see. You've got AJ's Green Topics. He's in Iowa. Let's see, who else is there? If I'm forgetting anybody, in fact, I am. I'm not that caffeinated, quite honestly. It's in the morning. But, you know, put a shout out for if, you know, where are you and you are worm farming. I know we have um, people in the Deep South. We have people in Australia. Even Chili Chump has his own worm channel now, and he is in England. Which I think would be the perfect environment for Red Wigglers. So if you are a chili head and a worm person, you should definitely check out Chili Chump. He's trying to do his outside in a, uh, a shed with heating coils, which I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see how it works out for him. And if it works out for him, I think I might actually do something similar and get those African night crawlers. Oop, solid worm ball. Woo! And get those African night crawlers in the basement. It would be nice to have my dining room not also be part of a wormery. So if that heating thing keeps his population steady and healthy over the winter, I'm going to look into it. Because African night crawlers, at least for me where I live, are the most high maintenance drama queen worms I have ever had. They're good worms. They work. They work as hard as any other worm, if not harder, especially on things like bedding. But man, they do not like the heavy truck traffic where I live. They don't like the summer, spring, fall, and two days weather I have here. They're just super high maintenance. Now, I've had some people like, oh, maybe it's just the population you bought. I have had red wigglers that came from the east coast of the United States, and I've also had them come from the south. So, yeah, they just don't like my area. That's why they're in a vermi bag little mammoth because the zipper is the only thing that keeps some little guys in there. All right, enough yammering. Let's get them some food. Okay. So start off with a layer of prepared bedding. The aforementioned stock pot of food. Yep, the chicken soup went to the back of the uh, refrigerator and got forgotten about. Here is the leftovers from sorting. I was going to put those down below, but I forgot, so here we are. And then a cap of bedding. All right, so they are all nice and tucked in. All right, for those of you who are still here, let's go look at those castings and see how I manage them over the winter. Okay, so here we are. These are the ones that I just put in there. They're a little bit drier. If we dig down, things should be a little wetter. Not significantly, so I need to add some more water in here and then also something to keep the microbes and the little wormies happy. I have some of the water left over from the prepared bedding. And I am just gonna keep mixing that in until it gets to the right moisture. And the right moisture is gonna be wetter than that. It's the whole wrung out sponge thing. So those new ones were pretty dry. It's 100% uh, furnace season here, so it, I'm gonna have to keep a closer eye on this. Even though I had a lid on it, it did still dry out. But I work it in so that I don't end up with too wet or end up with water pooling at the bottom. Because if you just pour water in here, the likelihood is that you're going to end up with pooling water at the bottom that is going to become anaerobic. So it is best to take the time and add and scruff in and make sure that <clears throat> you're not overdoing it because too much water um, it can be just as bad as not enough water. At least if there's not enough water, they can go dormant. But if there's too much water, then the ammonia will kill off everything, especially in a closed bin, which this is. All right, that looks pretty good. Scoot this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. 
All right, well, if you like this video, I have a playlist that is all the 55 gallon drum right over here, playlist that you can see. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.